Establishing, agreeing, and communicating your system context is a critical component of use case modeling. System context relates to abstraction, and abstraction can be very powerful for managing complexity and separation of concern between teams, as it isolates the more abstract system owners from the unnecessary exposure to the volatility that occurs at more detailed levels. An example I sometimes use in my SysML training is that of an insulin pump management system. An insulin pump is a wearable electronic device that is attached to a patient via a thin tube called an infusion set. It replaces the need for the patient to take frequent injections by delivering rapid acting insulin continuously 24 hours a day. Importantly, it gives more ability for the patient and healthcare professionals to control the background level of insulin, known as the basal rate, as well as give insulin for meal times, known as a bolus. If we model the components of an insulin pump system in a BDD, we might start with something like this. The insulin pump is part of a insulin pump system. However, the insulin pump system is itself part of a larger system called an insulin management system. The insulin management system is essentially a system of systems. The insulin management system includes other devices such as a continuous glucose sensor, which can optionally be attached to a patient to provide continuous glucose measurements, and a blood test meter provided by a third party that works on its own but can also interact with the pump. The insulin management system can do things that individual components cannot. This aligns with Incozy's definition of a system as a construct or collection of different elements that together produce results not obtainable by the elements alone. An example is the ability to turn off the pump if the glucose level is predicted to go too low. We could model guarding against nighttime hypos as a use case of the insulin management system as it's an emergent behavior obtainable by a combination of the sensor readings and the pump. We could model these elements of the insulin management system using a BDD or block definition diagram. Based on the continuous sensing of glucose measurements from the sensor, together with knowledge about what insulin has been delivered to the patient, the pump could automatically suspend the delivery of insulin ahead of time to prevent the patient's glucose levels dropping below a pre-designated level. As sensor readings are taken from interstitial fluid rather than blood glucose, for the system to work safely, the sensor readings need calibration. This can be done using the blood glucose meter. All of this might form part of a safety case needed for FDA approval. A more conventional and common use case for an insulin management system is the delivery of insulin needed for a meal known as a bolus. This involves the patient taking into account a measurement of the food to be eaten, the patient's current blood glucose level, and an assessment of what activity the patient thinks they'll be doing in the next three to four hours. We can model this use case either textually as a set of steps the user does, or alternatively as a set of high level system functions. Let's try the latter. Let's define the first two behaviors as call operations for measuring the blood glucose level and calculating the dosage for the meal. These are essentially system functions, that is functions needed by the system to achieve system level use cases where the system level use case is something obtainable by a combination of elements of the system that is not obtainable by any individual element. In real life, of course, there are a few more steps to this. So this is a bit of a simplification. However, there are enough steps here to illustrate an important point. Let's put the final step that once the dosage has been calculated, the system needs to be able to deliver insulin. We can then use control flows to sequence the steps and an initial flow to show where the sequence starts. These are behaviors of the system needed to achieve the use case, but which part of the system is gonna do which behavior? I'll use an allocation wizard here to copy the operations to the sub parts of the assembly. Well, the measure blood glucose level function is fairly easy. You don't need to be a domain expert to hypothesize that this might be allocated to the test meter. Let's use the allocation wizard to copy the function from the owning insulin management system to the test meter block that we've defined as part of it in the BDD. In fact, we can probably hypothesize that it's the insulin pump which is going to deliver the insulin. So let's use the allocation wizard to copy this also. This leaves us with the question about which part of the system is going to allow the user to enter meal information and calculate the dosage. Is it going to be done by the insulin pump user interface or the test meter user interface? This is the sort of decision that the system architect needs to make. 
the choice is going to fundamentally affect the internal information that needs to be transmitted between the components of the system. If the calculate dosage is done by the test meter, then the proposed dosage would be sent from the meter to the pump. If the calculation is done by the pump, then it would be logical for the blood glucose readings to be sent to the pump, so that the reading can be taken into account of in the bolus wizard. Of course, this might depend on where the user interface is in our architectural design, which may relate to other use cases of the system or use cases of the individual components. This process of allocation in SysML can be done in different ways. If we have many different architectures to consider and we want to keep the behavior separate from the structure, we can do this with an allocation matrix in the user dependency relations. If we want to move to drawing sequence diagrams and build in an interaction model that fleshes out the signals between elements, we can use an allocation by copy to move these behaviors one level down. We can then directly use these operations on a sequence diagram in a state machines as actions. Notice how I've not actually said how the insulin is delivered. I've kept the model abstract to behaviors at a system level. That is essential to realize the use cases of the higher level system. I've also been extremely careful to choose use cases for the system as being ones that involve multiple components, not a single component. The single component use cases still exist, of course. It's just that they're not use cases of the insulin management system, rather they're use cases of things that comprise it, such as the insulin pump system or the test meter. Again, I go back to the Nkozy definition of a system as being a construct or collection of different elements that together produce results not obtainable by the elements alone. The use cases provide in a way of gluing these behaviours together in order to define how the results are going to be obtained. To illustrate this, let's change our use case context to that of the test meter. Well, here is the behaviour of the test meter as allocated from above. At the moment, it's a function or operation. So what are the use cases from the test meter's perspective? Well, a use case is a set of steps that achieve end-to-end -end value for one of the actors. In fact, we could write measuring blood glucose as a use case of the test meter. The difference is that the set of steps are now steps that the test meter does, and the test meter is a set of elements that include other elements, such as batteries, sensors, displays, controllers. The test meter doesn't include the insulin pump system, but may communicate with it. So at this level of abstraction, the insulin pump system is an actor. Now at the moment, these use cases are all in the same Rhapsody project, Normally I'd have them in separate projects with connections between them. The thing is how the measurement is done is abstracted away from the higher level model. It's unnecessary detail at the insulin management system level, which is focusing on defining the communication needed to fulfill those higher level use cases. This means that the higher level is less volatile and generally not affected by decisions at the component level. It also means that the higher level is still valid, even if there's more than one type of test meter. Also, at the test meter level, there's going to be use cases that are only relevant for the test meter. Battery management might be one of them. Hopefully this explains how use cases can be created at different levels during the hierarchical decomposition of systems. Like when a skydiver jumps out of a plane, the first thing they look for is not the gate in the field, it's a choice between the land, the sea and the white bits. The same can be true with models. Abstracting models enables you to focus on essential decisions needed to define the collaboration between components of the system without defining the internals of the components. The internals of the components can be dealt with either by a separate team or on a different model. Using the concept of hierarchical decomposition, where use cases are formed at different levels, we can help manage complexity while focusing on essential architectural decisions. This ends my video. If you do need any help or want to ask any questions, feel free to email me. I can do tool neutral trainings, but as an expert in Rhapsody, I can also deliver my own trainings or trainings through IBM Global Training Partners that focus on how to get the best out of the very latest versions of the IBM Rational Tools. As I don't sell tools, I can also give impartial advice on modeling in general.